Welcome back to the program. If you're just joining us, this is the big story right here on KTN News. On a night, we're trying to probe the shocking development that took place in Savo, where Kenya lost a total of nine rhinos, an endangered species. And we've had that press briefing by the Tourism and Wildlife Cabinet Secretary Najib Balala, blaming uh, the death on, you know, salty water and, you know, heat wave. That is what he said, quote unquote. Of course, that is preliminary investigation, and we yet to get our hands on the complete investigation. And Ali, I've been uh, speaking or talking to Reynard Bonke from Friends of Nairobi National Park, as well as Chris Dyers, who's the director, Wildlife Direct. But now on the line, I have Jim Nyamu, an elephant research scientist and activist against poaching and trade in ivory. And uh, Nyamu is the executive director of the Elephant Neighbors Center and is leader of the movement Ivory Belongs to Elephants. Jim Nyamu, good evening. Welcome to the program. And uh, I'm sure you understand that this is not the first time we've seen, you know, translocation of wild animals from one place to another. But this is actually the first time that Kenya has lost such a big number of not just any other animal, but an endangered species like, like rhino. What are you reading in this first? Thank you so much, Yusuf. Thank you. I am in Kajiado, as you are. I'm on my way to, to South Africa, raising awareness by working on the elephant conservation. We started the work on Saturday. I just arrived in Kajiado. I'm so, so tired. But uh, this is a discussion that I would want to take it forward. Please do. One, uh, mm -hmm. yes, I personally have involved, been involved in the translocation of animals. And uh, for this particular case, this is so worrying, and I like the discussion, the, the, the deadly conservation. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we should ask ourselves, why do we need to translocate these animals? Mm -hmm. You know, at this point in time, we must also consider the, so many things before we move the animal. One, I am not, personally, I'm not really encouraged by even moving those uh, very delicate species to, to Savo. Mm -hmm. We've moved so many animals before. I remember we moved animals from, from uh, Moya Reserve to Savo, and we never lost even a single one. Mm -hmm. And this particular, I, what the minister have said, this is the finding that the, the rhinos may have died because of the salt, salt water. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Anytime we move any animal from one area to another, it requires a pre-survey that is done. You know, mm -hmm. showing, and this might take six months or so to show what, why are we moving these, the families are moving, and also after they're moving them, mm -hmm. what is the new environment? This, is, this shows that there was no study done. Mm -hmm. And this is very unfortunate, and it shows that something was wrong. Either there was a, there was a miscalculation or mm -hmm. they did it in a hurry. Yes. You know, those nine rhinos, to me, that is more than poaching. Mm -hmm. you know? clearly, because, clearly, clearly, Nyamu, this is something that could have been avoided. And we're getting reports from among conservationists in Kenya that the individuals who are trying to render the Kenya Wildlife Service incompetent uh, through this kind of an action. I mean, are we reading, are they reading too much into this development, perhaps? To, to me, because they are the same people who moved animals and they don't kill any. Mm -hmm. But this, this particular one, and the result what is coming out from the CS, it mm -hmm. says that Rhinos may have died over water. Mm -hmm. You know, the, in Savo, we have, we have animals that are taking the same water. But here we are talking of there was no proper survey that was done after mm -hmm. releasing them. That shows the incompetency, or they either, either they did it, but either they were due, they were, there were some forces, mm -hmm. or they, were, they, they never considered to do proper research or pre-survey before conducting the, the, the translocation. Mm -hmm. and what, what was the need for moving animals without any survey? We didn't want to see any showbiz. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. We, if we wanted to do a showbiz or any kind of uh, uh, that we are close to the, to the rhinos, we need to know how delicate the black rhinos are. Mm -hmm. Looking at what has happened, we've just lost a whole species. And this is the 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 the, the, the rhinos. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the, the the Sudan. We've lost yes. our species. Mm -hmm. So now, after the result, now we've killed the, the the nine rhinos have died, or they may even be more than that. Mm -hmm. And I know that even uh, the, there was a previous uh, translocation to Sagare. We all lost all those ones, and nobody said this. Mm -hmm. I think I think to be honest, we don't need to move these species anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, because now, Jim, you've talked about the need, the need to have thorough scrutiny. You've talked about the need for these agencies to test and really determine whether the area of your know, destination for these animals are conducive for these animals in, in question. So from your own explanation or from your own you know, belief, who do you think should take the full responsibility for the nine animals that Kenya has lost, the rhinos that we've lost? Of course, it's the Kenya Wildlife Service because they are the people who are doing this. Mm -hmm. I, the Kenya Wildlife Service, they did this with WWF. 
there was support from uh, the bond free the 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 people who are involved i'm sure there is a whole vet officers mm -hmm. who are involved in this and even that report that shows that they died over over over, over salt water they were never done by by army or individuals, it was done by the organization that mm -hmm. is mandated through after the welfare of Kenya Water Service. What we need to do is mm -hmm. those findings, they need to come out clearly and say, was there negligence? Was, because it is not miscalculation, because if they died over drinking water, well, was there a research done before releasing them that this will be the area that will be released and what will be the consequence and what can they be avoided? I'm mm -hmm. sure they could have avoided the killing of those nine rhinos. Mm -hmm. Clearly, yes. there's something that could have been avoided. Jim Nyamu, many thanks for your input. And now let me bring our viewers back to the studio. We still have Reynard Bonk and Chris Daz. Chris, you've had the explanation there uh, from uh, Jim Nyamu. This is another individual who has a lot of experience when it comes to matters of wildlife in this country. From your own experience, do you think there's some sort of fault play there? Well, you, you cannot rule out anything at this moment until mm -hmm. we see the final investigation report. But, but I, I agree with Jim, you know, things, things have gone wrong. But so what now that things have gone wrong, we also got to look forward because uh, the, the black rhino population must go up from, mm -hmm. from the conservation uh, leaders and from also the number of tourists expected to come into this country to look at our beautiful wildlife. Mm -hmm. So I think going forward, we really need to do more scientific research. What our international uh, partners, uh, we have to consult more deeply again, a lot of uh, successful uh, translocations have been done. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, Yusuf, I must point out that Kenya has put a, a stipulated a very strong position on protection of wildlife and also the implementation of management of conservation of wildlife. That's mm -hmm. critical also. There's a protection and there's a management of conservation, mm -hmm. management of the parks. Mm -hmm. So mine is to say, but again, the president, when he burnt the, the ivory task and uh, some rhino horns again, the cabinet secretary has to look into the report and take action. And we, we strongly believe he's, he's, he's keen on taking positive action. And we need changes and we need actions uh, to be taken for those responsible. And this will give a message to the world that we are serious about protecting our, our wildlife and to ensure the future of conservation is well taken care of. Between the balance of conservation and the balance of tourism, we need to make this uh, positive and work well for this country. Mm -hmm. Now, Renard, of course, Kenya has come from afar as far as you know the uh, conservation of rhinos is concerned. Now we, are at a, we have about 1,250 rhinos in Kenya, and now we've lost nine at a go. What does what, what are conservationists saying about this, and how big of a blow is this? Yeah, of course, <coughs> uh, at uh, the beginning of uh, my response, I said this is a national conservational you know, disaster because these are not just rhinos, but they are black, highly endangered rhinos that we've lost in, a, in just one month. Uh, maybe in a week, we don't know what exactly happened where because at first we, like I said, uh, uh, the report came further, it was only seven that died, and then it moved to eight, now it's nine. But one died during the translocation exercise, mm. and uh, the rest, uh, you know, died uh, on site. So clearly, there's, uh, like Jim has said before, we don't know what really or uh, what really happened, or whether someone slept on the job. Because uh, true, uh, Kenya is trying to make you know efforts to uh, towards the conservation sector. We have uh, a national rhino conservation strategy that I think was launched late last year. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, from the press conference, I think on a positive note, he said, the cabinet secretary said that uh, he is working with other, you know, different government agencies uh, to develop uh, a framework to have all these uh, protected areas or areas of ecological importance, you know, protected from, from development. So, mm -hmm. of course, this has happened. And of, we are mourning it's a disaster to the conservation uh, fraternity. And uh, really, this should be a lesson and uh, like Jim has said, we mm -hmm. need to look further why uh, this is important. I agree, or uh, uh, maybe I could slightly defer. Uh, translocation exercise was necessary because Nairobi National Park, you know, is diminishing in size over the years due to the development pressures that we've seen. Mm -hmm. You know, the wildlife corridors, uh, the wildlife disposal areas, all of them are being grabbed or the different development areas. Again, there's weaknesses in the, in the legal system as far as, you know, zoning and land use. Uh, uh, policy system uh, is concerned. So mm -hmm. uh, people are just into the land, they sell their land uh, to someone who is uh, looking at that land from a development perspective. So all this has diminished uh, the size of the park. Uh, but again, 
Mm -hmm. My own question is, uh, or my own area of concern is, uh, what was really uh, uh, done before this translocation exercise? Mm -hmm. This who was involved? Uh, what you know uh, uh, parameters were laid down? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, instance, yes. Bonke, yeah. we're, we're going to talk about what ought to have been done before this translocation. And I'm going to spoke, speak to Dr. Ogada shortly. Mm -hmm. He's someone who has an experience in this field. But even as we try to get hold of him, uh, Chris, you've seen that development, of course. It's uh, shocking news, not just for Kenya, but so, to so many people across the world. What do you think needs to be done to avoid this kind of occurrence again? As much as, of, of course, we're waiting for this uh, complete investigation to be, to be made public. Well, you sure first, that's a brilliant question. Uh, I can tell you, uh, and many of us who uh, have been involved with uh, some of the organizations like Old Pajeta, uh, Borana, if you look at uh, various conservation uh, areas and how they have managed to bring the rhino numbers up has been successful. So there is a lot of learning and a, a lot of scientific research available from other successful conservation uh, management uh, parks which have brought the numbers of rhinos up. And I think this, this type of uh, statistics need to be shared. So we need to collaborate more strongly between, between our international partners and our successful case studies where the numbers of rhinos have grown substantially. Look at Lewa. Lewa has got uh, really a strong population of white and black rhinos, a very successful uh, organization. What have they done right and how can KWS and, uh, and again all the scientists and all the international funders Mm -hmm. come together and make sure that this doesn't happen again. So I really feel that uh, we have the knowledge. The rhinos have been here for millions of years. We have done a lot of studies on the rhinos, and the numbers have grown up. I mean, from 20,000 rhinos in 70s, we lost a lot of rhinos because of poaching, which is a, is a deadly problem for, for, for Africa and for, for so, so much uh, tourism earnings and revenue for so many countries. So mm -hmm. rhinos are really important, and uh, all this learning and all the economic value is critical for us to, to take forward into our strategy. Mm -hmm. We have a strategy for the Black Rhinos 2017 to 2021, and this needs to be implemented very well. Clearly, a lot needs to be done, done there. Now, uh, let me speak to Dr. Murakai Ogada, who is a, a carnivore ecologist, and of course, he's online. He is a carnivore ecologist. He has been involved in conservation work for 16 years in Kenya and other parts of Africa. Dr. Ari, good evening. Welcome to the program. And uh, I'm sure you've had that press briefing earlier by the uh, Tourism and Wildlife Cabinet Secretary Najib Balala. And uh, let me just begin with this. This is not the first time that we've seen translocation of wild animals uh, in Kenya. What do you think ought to have been done in this kind, in this latest uh, situation where Kenya has lost about, is it nine uh, rhinos? I, I, I think uh, translocations, first of all, the, yeah, you're right. The, this has been done several times and K, KWS, I believe, has a, a very highly experienced and professional team who handled this i think one one of the one of the questions is how hurriedly this was done and what the reason behind this translocation was in terms of policy strategy and and uh, and uh, and planning because because it seems to have been done in a in a hurried manner with we i know i know from my knowledge that uh, translocations of endangered species are done and you have what is called like a soft release where the animals spend a short time in a sort of halfway sort of pen before being released into the bush and um i wonder i wonder what went wrong and what was the hurry that 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 made this process go so fast that one animal could die and another and another and another until nine before things could stop. It means things were being done simultaneously. And Dr. Lee, don't you think the numbers were a bit big, you know, because we're talking about about 14 uh, rhinos that were translocated, you know, from uh, Nakuru and Nairobi National Park to, to Sava. Don't you think the numbers were a bit too big? Yes, the, the, the number was, was too big to be done at once. These things are planned in, in over a long time and they're taken few animals at a time. That's why we sort of get to when something goes wrong, you you can lose only one or two animals if you are doing it in sequence. But if you are doing it simultaneously with two larger numbers, one thing can go wrong and you lose large numbers like what we've lost. I think one of the key things we need to look into is the reason why these animals were being translocated. Because translocations are always um, procedures of high risk to both people and wildlife. So they need to be taken with utmost consideration for all other alternatives uh, and uh, and uh, they and due care must be taken 
through tell you, apparently, the... apparently this latest translocation is part of controversy, even right before uh, it took place. And there are reports that, you know, these animals are being transferred from a public, uh, you know, protected area to a private uh, sanctuary. How, how true is this? Yes, yes. My, my, my understanding is the same as well that there's a sanctuary which, was, which I think was being, had been set up by WWF. And I think, I think this is a very worrying thing at policy level where we, we have conservation NGOs basically usurping the role of the statutory authority. And this is a, this is a grave concern in Kenya, not just with rhinos, but with, with, with reference to policy procedures, changes of regulations. Too much is being driven right now by the NGO sector, which should actually be supporting the state agency rather than sort of driving the state agency in certain directions. Is it going to be a hindrance to the conservation effort in this country? I think it will bring confusion. We will not have clear strategy if, if, if NGOs lead this, because we know NGOs, many NGOs in conservation are run by individual agendas, private donors and private foundations. So a country's policy cannot follow these myriad of directions that, that are held by, by uh, conservation NGOs. Mm -hmm. Thank you yes. very much, Dr. Ogada, for your input. Now, uh, Reynard uh, Bonke is still with me. He is from the Friends of Nairobi National Park. Reynard, as we conclude, do you expect to see heads rolling, be it at KWS, be it at the ministry? And do you, who, who do you believe shall take the responsibility for all this? Oh, well, uh, uh, from the, again, uh, the press briefing, we'll have a, a, a report, the investigation report from, according to the CS, uh, an independent, you know, investigator, and uh, he has involved uh, various uh, different uh, types of, 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 of investigators. So only after 23rd will we really know how serious or whether this report will uh, make sense or will hold some water. Mm -hmm. So from then we can really know where to point fingers and out, you know, to, uh, to, 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 to propose, uh, you know, a way forward. So as at now, we cannot throw away, including all those allegations that have been on social media, nothing cannot be ascertained at this point until on 23rd that you'll have the report and hopefully we'll uh, be able to access this, uh, uh, the EIA that was done so that we can compare all these two reports, whether they really hold water to uh, what the CS is saying and where or what went uh, wrong how. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Chris, let me give you the last word here. Do you expect to see heads rolling soon? Well, well I think... Uh Head, heads will roll and I think action will be taken. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we are confident this will not happen again. Going forward, uh, we need to pr plan properly and ensure this is, uh, is a lesson learned. We control tomorrow and uh, we look, we're looking forward to the Cabinet Secretary's uh, report and uh, uh, I'm sure he's going to take uh, the right actions to move K Kenya Wildlife Services forward. Thank you very much, uh, Chris Dyes, for your input. Chris is the director, Wildlife Direct. Reynard Bonke is, the, is from the Friends of Nairobi National Park. And earlier, I spoke to Jim Nyam, who's a conservationist and elephant activist, as well as Dr. Mordecai Ogada, who's a carnivore ecologist. Of course, we're probing this matter that has shocked Kenyans and, of course, so many people across the world. Kenya has lost a total of nine rhinos, an endangered species, while they were being translocated from both Nakuru National Park as well as Nairobi National Park to Savo National Park. Of course, we'll wait for that complete investigation from the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife. And that is the big story tonight. My thanks for watching. My name is Joseph Ibrahim. Up next is KTM Prime.